What other anime news can we talk about? Oh, the one mangaka becoming a politician. Oh, yeah. Akamatsu Ken became a politician. Okay, yeah, here we go. So, for those of you who don't know, there is this manga artist by the name of Akamatsu Ken. And he is a extremely talented, extremely influential manga artist. You might know him from such manga as Love Hina. He also wrote a little series called Negima and a bunch of other shorter collection stories. And all are uh, great manga. Would recommend him. But he also, somehow, he won a seat in the Japan's House of Council. Motherfucker became an actual politician. He is the first manga creator in Japan's legislature. Boys, that's a W. That's a W right there. A big, fat, juicy, oily W. For weebs all around the world. And I'll tell you exactly why that is a W. Yo, what up? It's your boy. Before we begin this video, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, Cross Summoner R. Cross Summoner R drops the player into a fantasy world filled with a cast of charismatic characters. After an epic showdown with the Black Iron Mage, the various realms finally welcomed a brief time of peace. Beneath this peace, however, darkness continued to grow. Through self-ambition, a group of humans sought immortality and placed their hopes in a terrifying taboo form of magic. We've got a huge cast of charming characters. Look at all of them. Collect tons of playable summoners to take in the battles and progress through missions to upgrade their skills, unlock their true power, and learn more of their stories. Plus, Cross Summon R offers a wide variety of different game modes for you all to enjoy. The battle experiences in this game are absolutely blood pumping. Build a team and engage in intense real-time battles at any time, synergize hero skills and abilities to create devastating combos in flashy style, and use auto-battling to easily command characters or take control of attack timing for more precise action. Plus, for all of you who want to start the game, you can use the gift code on screen right now to get yourself a nice, sneaky little gift. You're welcome. But if you're interested, make sure to check out the game by clicking the link down in the description below. And thank you to Cross Summon R for sponsoring this video. Okay, so various Japanese media services projected on Sunday evening that the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, has won enough votes in the 26th House of Councilors election to secure a seat for manga creator Ken Akamatsu. In a Twitter post announcing the win, Ken Akamatsu noted that he'll be the first manga creator in Japan's legislature. And then obviously, you know, we've had some novelists, like creator of Grave of the Fireflies. Akamatsu secured a seat in the portional district of the House of Councilors, the upper house of Japan's national diet. Instead of representing a district linked to the specific local area, he will represent the LDP nationwide. He campaigned in person in all 47 prefectures of Japan. See, that's huge. That's huge because basically, don't get me wrong, I am not a professional at all when it comes to Japanese politics. So please take this with a massive grain of salt. But basically, he now holds power to dictate certain aspects in Japanese law and in society on a nationwide aspect, not just in a prefectural aspect. Because Japan has this really weird thing where in the 47 prefectures, you know, you can have certain prefectural laws where like Kyoto Prefecture can do this one thing that Tokyo Prefecture cannot. But my man's just beyond the local area network. He's off the land. He's on the WAN now, bro. Like he's on the entire gradient of the legislature, which is great because here we go. Akamatsu delved into politics in 2011 when he warned that proposed changes to Japan's copyright law would destroy derivative doujin, quote unquote, self-published works. Ken Sakafukui, a law and a Nihon University professor wrote an essay about the ongoing Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, TPP, talks that prompted Akamatsu's remarks. In 2013, Akamatsu joined other creators in opposing the LDP and its partner's proposed amendment to child pornography laws. According to the bill's opponents, the initial drafts did not differentiate between pornography featuring real children and images of children. Akamatsu visited the Diet and the LDP headquarters to express his concern, and the final bill passed in 2014 without a ban on explicit anime and manga. He then, in 2019, Akamatsu and the rest of the Japan Cartoonists Association, which I didn't know that was a thing, formally expressed their concerns on a government subcommittee's plan to expand the scope of copyright law, downloading anime images illustrations and photographs that are illegally posted to personal blogs and Twitter accounts would have also been illegal as would copying and pasting song lyrics which is fucked isn't it isn't that fucked up that it's illegal in Japan the copyright law is so fucked in Japan right now that just downloading anime images and putting them up on your Twitter literally every person right now with an anime Twitter profile picture on their Twitter would be committing in Japan an illegal act according to Japan's copyright and don't even get me started on if you have an anime profile picture and your posting your favorite fucking anime opening lyrics to it as well. Dog, that's a double offense right there. The proposed change would not be limited to directly downloading images themselves. Taking screenshots of illegally uploaded media would also be against the proposed new law. So someone was saying in the chat earlier that like somebody, when we were talking about the new Chainsaw Man chapters, for example, that someone was just like full on taking pictures of the Chainsaw Man chapters and just posting them on Twitter. Mm. Illegal in Japan. This year, Akamatsu characterized criticism from the Global Gender Equality Organization, UN Women, as external pressure to regulate Japan's freedom 
freedom of expression, especially for manga, anime, and games, and added that such pressure is not new. He elaborated that such regulations need to be approached with rationality and not be obeyed simply because an outside party is demanding it. Which, yes. Akamatsu's definition of external pressure does not necessarily mean outside Japan. He used the removal of PSAs featuring virtual YouTuber Tojo Dinka as an example. Which, I don't know the supposed example that they're giving in this, but I assume it was a big thing. And yes, I absolutely fucking agree. Again, this is nothing new. Everyone should know. The UN is the world's greatest organization for coming up with some of the dumbest fucking excuses for proposed law. And it's great that people in Japan are doing stuff like this to being like, uh, no, pretty fucking stupid that you would try and, you know, do all of these things that is clearly just ass backwards, you know? Like, no one asked for this shit. Not even people in Japan are asking for this shit. So maybe you should stop. Maybe don't do that. But yeah, so basically, long of the short of it is, Akamatsu can finally getting a seat in Japanese parliament is a massive W for weebs. Obviously, Japan's copyright laws right now are absolutely fucked, as you guys saw right here. Downloading anime images, illustrations, and photographs that are illegally posted to personal blogs and Twitter accounts would have also been illegal. Which is why, when a lot of people ask me, why are there no Japanese Anitubers? This is the reason why. This is a big reason why Anitubers and Anitubing as a culture in Japan is non-existent. Because it's impossible. You can't do that. It's physically impossible to talk about anime on YouTube in Japan without breaking copyright law. It's like absolutely fucking absurd. And look, there might be some people asking, well, you know, Joey, how come you're able to get away with it in Japan, you know? Because the only reason I'm able to do it is because I work directly with companies like Kadokawa, and I know people in Shueisha, in Kodansha, where now it's slowly, very slowly, getting to the point where a lot of Japanese productions in the anime department are slowly starting to understand the concept of fair use. Unfortunately, in Japan, legally speaking, fair use is non-existent. If you try to use the fair use law in the court of law in Japan, it won't pass because Japan does not have that concept. They are so anal with copyright shit that it's not gonna pass. It's not gonna pass at all. So that's why it's really kind of annoying that people like content creators in Japan are trying so hard to convince Japanese companies and Japanese like copyright holders that, hey, we're not taking your shit for malicious intent. We're taking your shit because we have the right to because it falls under fair use according to YouTube's standard of practices. So that's why when someone was asking, hey, why don't you make content in Japan? It's because it's really fucking hard not using copyrighted material in any way whatsoever. It's ridiculous. And they don't see it as free promotion either. They are so protective of their IPs that they're just like, no, there's no such thing as free promotion. You're just doing it because you're trying to steal our shit. Which is, you know, anyone with a fucking brain will know that that's just not true. If you are a business owner and if you are an IP holder and someone is trying to promote your shit in a positive way, even if it's not even for a positive way, right? Think of it like this, right? Think about all of the Anitubers, right? Or all content creators on YouTube who talk shit about, say, Sword Art Online. Did it ever stop Sword Art Online from becoming literally one of the most successful light novel franchises in modern Japanese light novels? No, it didn't. If anything, it perpetuated the name of Sword Art Online to more people. It worked as exposure because any exposure is still exposure. It's still getting the name out there. Morbius is a great fucking example. If people weren't making fucking memes about Morbius, no one would give a shit about Morbius, right? And that's the problem. In Japan, they don't believe in any publicity being good publicity. They only view good publicity is good publicity and bad publicity is really bad publicity, right? They don't like being negative or critical about things, right? And that's the big reason why a lot of Japanese Japanese Anitubers just can't exist. Because let me tell you, if, for example, someone took the time in Japan to become an Anituber, like how a Western Anituber is, right? Where they would talk about shows, they would be critical with shows, they would review shows, sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes mediocre, right? It doesn't matter what it is on the spectrum. If they really wanted to abide by all the copyright laws and they wanted to be in the good graces and they wanted to be safe in the eyes of the copyright holders, their channel would consist nothing but positive reviews on shows and you wouldn't be able to see what this show looked like to any capacity. You wouldn't be able to see videos of it. You wouldn't be able to hear music from it. You wouldn't be able to hear voice acting from it. You wouldn't even be able to see pictures of it that are readily available on fucking Google Images. Now, here's a question to you all. Would you want to watch something like that? I sure as shit wouldn't. That sounds like a shit video. That sounds like a shit anime review. Why would you try and watch an anime review when you can't even see what the fuck the show even looks like that you're trying to review? No one's gonna watch that. And I think that's why there are no Anitubers in Japan. Because, again, it's just 
just fucking impossible to survive in that kind of environment, right? Breaking copyright laws in this economy? Fuck that is probably what a lot of Japanese potential anitubers were thinking before they inevitably decided, nah, I'm just not even gonna bother. And you know, I talked about this briefly in another piece of news that I put on the second channel of a Japanese movie reviewing channel that got arrested and detained and fined a shitload of money because of stuff like that, right? And that is a big reason why this news of Akamatsu Ken being in government and having, for the most part, good intentions on trying to protect manga and anime and doujin culture from being soiled and from being just fucking squashed by stupid lawmakers and copyright holders and just, you know, fucking old ass politicians who clearly don't understand the medium and just want to create all freedom. This is people that are stopping that. Akamatsu Ken is the guy who hopefully is going to stop that or is hopefully going to be someone in an actual position of power to be like, hey, dumbass fucking politicians, maybe don't try and destroy that thing that literally made my career. You know, regardless of what you think about certain, you know, aspects that he's trying to defend for, if you're someone who really cares about Japanese subcultures, especially things like manga and anime, doujin, any creative subculture that is otaku based in Japan, that you should be fucking standing up and applauding for Akamatsu Ken. Because this man is literally, we're just like, if no one's gonna listen to us while we're down there, I'll just come up to them. And he did. And he fucking did it. He actually fucking did it. And it was awesome because my friend messaged me when this happened. And you know, as the article says, he tweeted about it, right? And a lot of manga artists and a lot of industry people were congratulating the fuck out of Akamatsu Ken. There was a shitload of manga artists and like light novel authors and doujin circles that were saying fucking massive W. Massive W, Ken. Because it is. It is a massive fucking W. So look, all I'm gonna say is I hope that he, you know, actually pulls through with what he is trying to fight for and what he's trying to root for. So fucking round of applause. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna stand up and clap for Akamatsu Ken. He's literally the man who is going to speak on all of our behalfs. But I guess we'll find out if he actually pulls through. I really hope he does.